All right, welcome to a video on function analysis focusing on the rate of change. In this video, we're going to talk about finding f prime. Now listen, if this is not a calculus video, this is a pre-calculus video. We're focusing on the theory behind finding f prime. There, You may know shortcuts. You may um, know things that are outside the scope of this class, and I know those things too, but this is focusing on more of the theory for where these formulas for f prime come from. So um, please understand that. All right, so first off, what is f prime? f prime is a special function that finds the rate of change in any given x value. So keep in mind that we already know our good friend f of x. f of x is our standard function. x goes in, y comes out. So f of x is a function whose sole purpose is to take x's and get y's. Inputs, outputs. However, f prime of x, which we signify with this little accent mark here, that's f prime, it's said prime. So f prime of x is a special function. x goes in and out comes the rate of change at that x value. We don't get a y value, that's what functions do. Functions produce y values. f prime, this new special function, produces the rate of change at any given x value. Now, if you're in calculus, you probably learn all different kinds of ways to find f prime, but this video is focusing on the theory behind getting that f prime formula. So a little bit more theory-based idea here. So let's first talk about linear functions. So linear functions have the same rate of change at all points. And that rate of change is equal to the slope of the linear line. So uh, linear functions aren't concave up, they're not concave down. They, they have a rate of change that never ever changes. So that is why the rate of change at any given point is the same. And the rate of change at any given point is equal to the slope of that line. Therefore, the rate of change is a constant. And when it comes to linear functions, finding f prime, a formula to find the rate of change, it couldn't get any easier. So here's an example. We're given a linear function. I know this is linear because it has degree one. And I say, okay, well, boy, this is easy. This is a line with a slope of two sevens. And because it's linear, that slope, that rate of change will never ever be anything other than two sevens. It doesn't matter what X value I have you look at, the rate of change will always be two sevens. So F prime of X, a formula to tell you the rate of change at any given X, will always be a constant two sevens. There's your answer. Zero work needs to be done. That's how easy linear functions are. Quadratic functions, a little bit trickier. What we've learned is a quadratic function has a rate of change that changes at a constant rate. So the rate of change either increases or decreases at the same rate. So therefore, the rate of change at any given point would follow a linear model. Because listen, the quadratic function is not linear. My goodness, it's quadratic. But what I'm telling you is that the rate of change as you move throughout a quadratic function changes at a constant rate. And when something changes at a constant rate, it is linear. So where the function f of x is a quadratic, ax squared plus bx plus c, the formula to find the rate of change at any given point would therefore be linear because the quadratic function is changing at a constant rate. And when something changes at a constant rate, it is linear. The rate of change is what's changing at a constant rate. F prime of X is a formula to find the rate of change. And if I'm telling you the rate of change is changing at a constant rate, that means the rate of change is linear. Connecting the dots, I hope. So the formula for the rate of change would be linear, which would be looked at as MX plus B, a linear function. All right, so the big question is, how do I find that linear function? Let's do it. So here is a quadratic. Is, uh, quadratic is 0.7x squared minus 5x plus 6. And I would like to find a formula for f prime of x, a formula that can tell me the rate of change at any given point. So how do I find that formula? Well, the first thing I need is two points. But I don't need, I don't want two points on the quadratic. I want two points of my rate of change. So I need an x and I need its rate of change. I need another x and its rate of change. And it doesn't matter what x's you pick, just pick any x's you want. So I'm gonna pick two. So I need to figure out what is the rate of change at two. Now, if I plug two into the function, I'm gonna get y. I'm not asking for y. We're trying to find the rate of change. So how do I find the rate of change? Well, the theory is 
is um, I need to pick two points super close to two, find the rate of change between them. And the theory is that the rate of change between two points super close to two is going to be a very good approximation of what the rate of change at two is. So I'm going to let my calculator do all of the hard work here for this. So first thing is in y equals, I'm going to plug in the function 0.7x squared minus 5x plus 6. Make sure that that is the correct value there. And it is. All right, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this really cool feature. I'm going to hit vars, stands for variables, slide over to y vars, and then select function and grab y1. That is where I put the function in. Now I'm going to plug in, let's see here. I, I want to experience or I want to explore what the rate of change of two is. So I'm going to plug in like 1.9997. I want to pick a number that's arbitrarily close to two on the left hand side. Very, very close. There's my output X, Y. Okay, great. Now I'm going to pick another point that is on the other side of two, 2.007, another point that is really, really close to two on the other side, hit enter, input, output, X, Y. Okay, so now I have two points, and these two points are squeezing in at two, and two is what I'm trying to explore. So if I find the rate of change between these two points, I will get really, really close to the rate of change at two. So since these two points are really, really close to two, the rate of change between them will be really, really close to the rate of change at two. So how do you find the rate of change between two points? Simple. You take your Y value from the second point. You subtract your Y value from the first point. Enter. Divide that by the difference of your X's. So I'm going to do the 2.007. That's the second X minus 1.9997. And I get negative 2.19531. Okay. Okay. So what is my rate of change? It's not exactly that, but I bet it's close. So one thing we'd say as well, okay, if you're like kind of ho-humming, like you're not exactly sure, get closer. Now, what's going to end up happening is you're going to get close on the first try, right? I, now, I think I was pretty close, but what I tell kids is get really close. 1.999999. Input, output. Do it again. I mean, the, my point is the closer you get, the better your approximation is going to be. 2.000004. Okay, and then again, what you're going to learn is if I do this the first time, I'll get my answer a lot clearer the first time. So again, how do I find the rate of change between two points? Subtract the Y's on top. And then divide that by subtracting the X's. 2.000004 minus... 1.999999. And, oh, okay, I think I know the answer, negative 2.2. Pretty confident at this point because I've gotten so close to 2 and the rate of change between these two points super close to 2 is negative 2.2. I'm pretty confident that the rate of change at 2 is negative 2.2. So hopefully you see how that worked. Not too bad. Okay, but now I got to do it again. I got to do it again with a different X because if I'm going to find a linear equation, which I know F prime of X is, again, I hope I have explained that, I got to do, I need a second point. So let's do, I don't know, six. I mean, really, it doesn't matter what you pick. It's up to you. All right, so let's see here. So I'm going to go back here and I'm going to do the same thing I just did. But I'm going to do uh, this. I'm going to explore what the rate of change at six is. The theory says if I pick two points super duper close to six, I will get a really super duper close estimate of the rate of change at six. So 5.99997. And now I'm going to pick another value super duper close to six on the other side here, like 6.00. O, 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 8. And again, there he says, find the rate of change between these two points. I'm going to be pretty close to the rate of change at 6. So take uh, my second Y value minus my first Y value and get that value. Then divide that by the difference of the X's, 6.00008 minus 5.99997. And I get 
3.3999. So again, if I had to use some common sense here, that's going to be 3.4, right? That's, I, I'm, I know that this is not the answer, but it's really close to the answer. If I would get even closer, 5.9999999, I would probably end up just getting 3.4. And again, you're more than welcome to do that, but I'm pretty confident looking at that answer, 3.4 is my rate of change at six. Okay, now, again, I know that the relationship between the x's and the rates of change is linear because that's what we know about quadratic functions is that the rate of change changes at a linear rate. So now all I got to do is create an equation that, that connects these two points together, and I know it's linear, so I'm going to use um, my linear. So, um, oh, I need a slope, right? I need the rate of change of my rates of change. So I have two different rates of change, and I need to figure out what my rate of change of those rates of change are. So let's see here. I'm going to take my 3.4, subtract the negative 2.2 divided by the six minus two. So subtracting my rates of change on top, subtracting my x's on the bottom. Grab a calculator if you need to. 3.4, that's actually gonna end up being plus 2.2. And I get 5.6. Six minus two is four, so take 5.6 divided by four, and I get 1.4. So 1.4 is the rate at which my rates of change are changing. Whoa, remember, quadratic functions have a rate of change that changes. So my rates of change are changing by 1.4, okay? Now I have to put all this together for a final answer, and I need to create a linear function, and to create a linear function, you need one point, so grab this one, and I need my rate of change, there it is. So y, I'm using point-slope form here, y minus negative 2.2, equals 1.4 times x minus 2. Uh, that's y plus 2.2 equals 1.4x minus 1.4 times negative 2 is negative 2.8. Subtract the 2.2 over, and I get y equals 1.4x, negative 2.8 minus 2.2 is negative 5. So there is my formula. 4f prime, 1.4x minus 5. This is a formula that will tell me the rate of change at any given point on my parabola. So if I plug in 7, I'm going to get the rate of change. Plug in 10, I'm going to get the rate of change. Plug in negative 3, I'm going to get the rate of change. And I actually encourage you to check and make sure it works, right? Like we already know the rate of change at 6 is 3.4. So plug in 6, you better get 3.4. We already know that the rate of change at 2 is negative 2.2. So plug in 2, make sure that you get negative 2.2. It's that easy. It really is. So um, hopefully that makes sense. It's, um, now, what about a cubic function? What about a quadratic, or um, excuse me, a um, rational function? Well, those all are completely different. So this video is simply focused on linear and quadratics. Other functions have other methods that we will eventually learn about.